Hey everybody, welcome back to Planet Coaster, and welcome to my little Dutch experiment in this game. You're currently looking at a small facade that I built just out of boredom, and once I built it, I thought to myself, you know what, let's try another one, and let's try recording it and see how it goes. So that's this video, let's get started. No, but seriously, that's actually the premise for this video. I'm just gonna build a Dutch building, and uh, you're gonna watch me do it if you don't click away the video of course which is completely in your right to do and also very understandable but for those of you who are still tagging along let's let's get this thing going this recording has been gathering dust on my computer for nearly a year now i think and it's just one of these things which i sometimes start doing in games like this uh, that most of the time don't really turn into anything but this video i think is just slightly good enough to save because right now my hard drive is completely full of recordings that I haven't turned into videos and it's time to start clearing them so I can start playing this game again and record more stuff because that's that's kind of my life sometimes I really like playing these games but I'm just not quite as much a fan of editing and putting commentary on it so I just gather recording upon recording until it's time to uh, clear my hard drive again and we're kind of getting there this is what happens when you record uncompressed videos, by the way. It doesn't matter how many uh, terabytes of hard drive space you have. I have hundreds of gigs of recordings on my computer. And this one is just, uh, as you figured, slightly good enough to save and turn into this standalone video. But that also has something to do with an upcoming Planet Zoo project of mine, which I'm not going to tell anything else about. You guys will just have to see it to believe, I suppose. This is still a pretty fun experiment, I think, though. Uh, because for me, it was really uh, an attempt to see what we can do with the Theme Maker's Toolkit items in the game. I'm trying to stick as much as possible with just Theme Maker's Toolkit items here. And getting into um, a level of detail as well, which I think uh, I just wanted to try at some point in the game. So, these brick walls are uh, based on pieces that Idro has made. So big thanks to Idro for these amazing Theme Maker's Toolkit items. And include wall pieces, but also a standalone brick. And that standalone brick has been the um, catalyst for this experiment, uh, because it means that we can experiment with uh, Dutch mason work. And mason work is amazing, I swear. It's one of the most underrated parts of architecture and one that if you do start looking into it, you start noticing on buildings and it's like a whole new world is opened up for you. That might be slightly too nerdy for most people to be understandable or even sane, but there's just something so cool about different elements of architecture where if you learn about them, you start seeing things you didn't see before. I remember when I first learned what wall anchors are and wall anchors are basically the, the metal uh, things that pop out of walls, what I just built right there, and then removed and built again. And there was just a time in my life where I didn't know these things existed, so I also just didn't notice them on buildings, and then you just don't see things. And I think there's just something wonderful about learning things, not just about buildings, but the world in general, and then um, seeing them everywhere. And that's not quite the bader meinhof syndrome, but it is something similar i think and uh, in the case of mason work it's with the, the different types of bonds and colors and types of bricks that you have there's flemish bond and there's dutch bond and there are different ways of putting the cement between the bricks and all these details i will not go too much into um, but it is fun to notice about real life buildings and with games like this i do sometimes miss that we can't put our brick walls together brick by brick and I think the developers of these games are uh, very happy that we don't do that. Also, these games would get way too time-consuming if we actually had to do things that way. But in real life, it's what makes buildings interesting, I think. Uh, looking at them and realizing that every brick has been placed piece by piece. And there are different ways to make a pattern out of it. And uh, do the cement between the bricks and all that sort of jazz. It's pretty fun. And you can make patterns, like I did right here, with some of the glazed fired bricks, uh, which you can often find on uh, buildings in the Netherlands. 
especially buildings from the 19th century with their Art Nouveau or Jugendstil sort of types where different colored bricks were used to create different patterns on buildings. But beside that, we also have uh, other elements which I think you can use bricks for, like the little white stripes that you can see next to the windows and are going to be there all alongside this building, these horizontal lines, which in uh, Dutch we like to call speklagen, which is a funny word because it means bacon layer. And that's just kind of, you know, obviously you can see why, the, why they're called bacon layers. Looking at a, a red brick wall with the white stripes alongside it just makes me hungry just thinking of it. Um, but yeah, these, these, these elements are just really fun to work on. And that also goes for the uh, facade here with the wooden decoration, which is made out of way too many tiny pillars. But I was really not thinking about making this build usable or, uh, you know, what kind of lag it could create at some point in the future. I just thought to myself, you know, realistically, this would have to be made out of wooden slats in real life. So every slat is going to be a slat in the game as well. Uh, there's um, no using other pieces also for shapes like this there's no way around it either going into this level of detail you really have to add very small pieces um, and I think for a standalone build like this it's uh, it's forgivable I would do it in a big theme park anyway but this is why my parks lag too much and I have to abandon them halfway through the projects at least I'm very self-conscious about this you know um, and it's it's just fun to to do these things. Also, I haven't really said anything about what inspired this building in the first place, um, but that's also interesting. So the first building that was already built when this uh, video started, and it wasn't really a building, more of just a facade, is inspired by a, a row of buildings in Dordrecht at what we call Statenplein, which is uh, one of the most beautiful little spots of Dordrecht I think with really nice old facades and there's a whole story behind that but I will talk about that in the future in a, a certain Planet Zoo series of mine but um, yeah I just did this building in Planet Coaster as a little test and after it worked pretty well I thought you know let's just build another facade next to it that was this building but then when I got to building this Eventually it just became bigger than I originally anticipated and it turned into some sort of 19th century mansion. So that's what it is now. That's also why I pulled it away from the other facade and I am now turning it into a full 3D space. Uh, because this is going to be a, a nice 19th century, very expensive building that you could probably find somewhere in a, a sort of expensive neighborhood full of villas in a, a Dutch city. It's a particular kind of architecture that you find very often in Dutch cities in what we call the, the, the 19th century belt or uh, something along those lines. Many cities in the Netherlands, of course, expanded beyond their city walls, but only starting in the 19th century, around the time that the first train stations were also built. Uh, so you'll often find that Dutch cities have a belt of 19th century architecture around the old city, with the uh, train station also somewhere along that belt or in that belt. And uh, very often the train station will be a fancy 19th century building with a neighborhood around it that is almost designed around it with one road going from the train station to the city center with loads of 19th century buildings like this. Standalone buildings, big tall ceilings, uh, kind of like urban villas. And they're just really fun buildings to build I think because they were built with uh, industrial methods. So they could go kind of bonkers on these buildings but still using very uh, traditional uh, um, materials and uh, decorations and stuff like that. So all in all, pretty fun to do in a game like this as well. And uh, a nice reason also to go ham on the, uh, the brick patterns and the tiles. Uh, because as you notice, I'm also using roof tiles, which are uh, the amazing roof tiles, which also worked very well on the Moroccan section of Arabats of Arabia. Those standalone roof tiles that you can use alongside the, the actual sheets of roof and uh, allow you to add some extra uh, detail and uh, coloring to your roofs, which is pretty neat. The only thing I think that is uh, 
slightly annoying about Planet Coaster in cases like this is that everything just kind of has this sheen to it. Everything's a little bit white. And especially when we zoom out the brick texture, uh, the white grooves between the bricks uh, just become a lot more noticeable. So that's a little bit iffy. Um, it's not the biggest issue in the world, but this building definitely looks better close up than far away, which is probably also something to do with uh, the amount of detail that it has. But that's just uh, the uh, limitations of Planet Coaster, which is also a story for another day. But there's a, a good reason why eventually I decided, you know, this is fun and this has been fun, but there's probably a game in which I can uh, follow my dreams a little bit more realistically. But still, this was a fun experiment with uh, the Theme Maker's Toolkit items, especially Idro's items, which make up a, a vast majority, I think, of the total pieces in this build. And the nice thing about it is that they're all just so small and you can use them to make your custom own everything. So that goes for these brick walls, but also for the wooden elements of this building, which are all made out of tiny little planks and slats and also goes for the roofs, which have individual roof tiles and all that jazz. It's just really fun to work out these tiny details and see the building come together because at this point, I think it's uh, really getting its shape, although it is uh, also a very standard sort of shape. Just the one thing that was missing, I think, was a, a chimney. And this turned into my next little project, as you can see here, because the wall set doesn't have a brick pillar. And that was a bit of a shame because I really wanted to have a brick pillar, not too big of a pillar either. So I decided to build that out of uh, separate brick pieces. So here you go. Here's our uh, chimney pillar on the side of the building that we can turn into a, a full-fledged uh, fancy looking uh, chimney at some point. So I'm attaching it here to the roof, which is something that you can often see with buildings from this time and uh, finding just the right thing to put on top of it to make it look like a realistic chimney, which took a bit of a trial and error because it's difficult to find things that look like a little chimney hood. Um, but eventually I just settled on keeping it simple and not going too ridiculous. And thankfully at this point, I could just copy over part of the building to the other side to um, almost finish the whole thing, uh, which is um, a good time to uh, remind you to always group your objects in a, a smart way so that you can copy them around and uh, change colors of certain things if you want to keep it flexible. Because if you make your building all part of the same group in the game, doing mini detail builds like this uh, becomes pretty annoying at some point. Um, also, I thought at this point I could build a chimney on the other side as well, but it just felt like a little bit too much. I think having just that one chimney on this side is uh, more than enough. So that's mostly it for the building. Now here I was also thinking we need some sort of garden or at least uh, an environment to put this building into so that we can see what this would look like uh, given a, a sort of urban context and it's not just a building in the middle of nowhere. Plus I need that to make a decent looking thumbnail at least. So I'm building a street and trying to make it look a, a little bit Dutch as well. Unfortunately we don't have the uh, 30 by 30 centimeter grey uh, pavement tiles that are so typical of the Netherlands uh, in Planet Coaster. So I'm just gonna have to settle with a slightly more fancy pavement texture. But what did make me pretty happy is that we do have very similar looking brick streets as we do in the Netherlands. So at least that texture I think uh, gets it down pretty well. And then for the pavement here, I'm just going for uh, another texture that I think um, Mango made. Mango has also been on a roll for years already making Theme Maker's Toolkit items. And this particular Manor Plaza path, I think something along the lines of that, is uh, one of the nicest path textures I've found in the game, I think, so far. Um, so I just had to use it for this build and also attach a, a little curb to the side and then uh, put this fence in place as well. So as you can see, if you're very well adjusted to the pieces in the game and to the Theme Maker's Toolkit workshop uh, items, almost everything here is uh, Theme Maker's Toolkit, except 
the foliage because we don't have a lot of foliage um, that's not uh, that's a theme maker's toolkit which also has something to do with the fact that there's a, a maximum size limit on theme maker's toolkit items as well so we're kind of limited there but also foliage is notoriously difficult to make so that's just something we're gonna have to live with and here for the uh, entrance into the garden I thought, you know, we need something fancy, uh, something that we can put some planters on and have some flowers. Uh, make it look a bit more welcoming than just a simple gate. And then just put some shrubs and flowers in the garden uh, to finish this whole thing. Not putting too much effort into this, honestly. Uh, just making it look like it could realistically be a real scene in real life. Now for the final touches, I decided to make it seem like this building is really in a realistic Dutch streetscape. So to do that, uh, I also decided that it's time to give the other facade at least a little bit of a treatment so I can put it in the picture uh, with the other building. And of course also add some detail to it and some foliage and gardens around it. which kind of made me wonder. This is a bit of a weird build in that sense that realistically I'm just working on this from a certain angle and trying to figure out you know what is this picture going to look like. Um, so in a way, in a very very roundabout way, it's almost like drawing or painting to me. Uh, just trying to figure out how a certain picture is going to be and how I'm going to compose it. Uh, because with this build as soon as you rotate the camera it's just going to look very different, which was also an excuse for me to use this Theme Maker's Toolkit grass, which looks kind of weird from certain angles, uh, but then again from angles like this, it really does look like you have some tall grass, and moving it in with some uh, other bushes and stuff I think blends it pretty well. And finally, adding some furniture on the street makes this look like we're actually on a Dutch street. And with that, I'll leave you guys with some uh, cinematic shots and thank you for watching this strange little one-off video. I hope you enjoyed it at least. Bye bye!